This video tutorial is going to show you really quickly how to use a serger sewing machine. A serger machine is like a specialty sewing machine. Um, they are a common fixture in costume shops and also in uh, clothing instruction areas because they have the wonderful power of quickly and easily finishing the edges of fabric. Um, if you're wearing a t-shirt or something similar where you can look inside and see the interior seams, odds are you've got some serging in there somewhere. Um, because that is a really common practice on modern clothing. For example, here is the inside of a pair of pants that, odds are, I can find some serging in there to show you. Yep, there we go. Uh, did not plan this one ahead, but there is serging present in most gar garments these days. Um, and so it's really important to know how to use a serger. The good thing is, Sergers seem kind of scary. They've got a lot of threads, they've got a lot of needles, but ultimately they are just another sewing machine. Um, so to use a serger, you turn it on. Typically the on-off switch is on the side, one of the sides. It varies based off of the brand. Uh, mine is a Brother Serger, uh, model 1634D. So it's the kind you can get at uh, like Joann's. I mean, my, my serger is pretty typical, not anything crazy or expensive. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through really quick just the fastest version of the parts of this thing, and then I will show you how to use it and we'll be done. Um, so as you can see on my serger, there are four threads at the top. Each of these threads comes down through one of these tension controlling wheels. Um, and then it goes into the machine in a variety of ways. Um, if you pop open the casing, first I gotta take off my thread catcher. If you pop open the casing, you can see there is a diagram of um, how to thread the serger. You also can take this part off and pop the side open. They, they come apart in a lot of ways. Um, and I'm not gonna take mine all the way apart because I'm not showing you how to thread it today. Um, but that is the main, the main fear of the serger that I found is people are afraid of trying to thread them. And the really good news is um, if you were ever encountering trying to thread a serger, there are two like cheats of how to do it. I'm just going to talk you through them. I'm not gonna show you. Um, but cheat number one is you've got a serger that's got all of the threads on it already. They're just the wrong color. Um, for that, the easiest method, and this is what I always try to do if there's an option, is I just take the color I'd rather my thread be. Um, I snip these threads off uh, one at a time. I always go one at a time. Here, I'll change the angle on this. Um, I always go one at a time on flipping the threads so that I don't have too much to manage. Um, but I will cut one... And then I will just tie a square knot with my new thread. Um, so just essentially, I'm just doing a double knot. Um, and then you can either, once you've got all of your threads switched to the new color, you can hold onto this tail here and run the pedal. Um, and it will eventually pull out all of the remaining thread color that you had. Or you can switch your tension dials down to zero and then just pull it through with your hands. I personally prefer to run the motor. Um, it just goes quicker for me. Uh, so on your serger, You've got these four threads. We talked about it being threaded. You've got two top needles and then two bottom needles that come up through uh, the base of the machine, sort of like how you've got a bottom bobbin thread on a regular machine. The difference being there are two of them down there and then two of them on the top. So to use a serger, what you're going to do is you are going to get a scrap to test fabric um, before you start trying to use it on your real project, I would recommend. I don't foresee it being an issue. Um, but it never hurts to use a test scrap first. So this is my test scrap. And I'm going to lift the foot of my serger up. Every single serger I've used has a different foot lifting mechanism. So you just have to kind of find where there's a lever that you can lift up. Um, I'm going to place my fabric beneath the foot and I'm lining the edge of my fabric up with the edge of this little plastic side here. And you'll notice on your serger, there are also these lines. Um, those are to indicate where the blade that's on your serger, which is right there, is going to chop your fabric off at. So if I was going here, it would be cutting off quite a bit of fabric. You don't want that. There's there's very few cases, I, I cannot think of a single case where I've been like, yes, it's time for me to serge off a bunch of fabric. If you're trying to get rid of fabric, cut it off first and then serge it. Otherwise, you've got very little control over what the line's going to look like. So if you don't want your fabric to have any cut off, which you don't, um, line it up with the edge of the presser foot and the edge of the uh, base of the machine. And then you're just going to push the pedal down. 
and guide your fabric through just like it's a regular sewing machine. Um, all this is doing is it is finishing the edge of your fabric. Here we go. And once you get it to the edge, you can cut it off. Um, always leave a tail of threads hanging out of your serger so that you don't lose um, threads and have it become unthreaded. If you cut like, right here, it could potentially have the thread slip up and then you have to rethread it. Um, and so this is what a surged edge looks like. This is going to be important for your bag project specifically. Um, and I think we'll also use it on your shorts project. But using a serger is fast, fun, and easy. I'm a big fan. I think it is a really quick, fun way to finish the edges of like an unlined garment if you're going to make a garment without lining. And it's a super important skill to have. So this is how to use a serger. Um, if you're ever having trouble with a specific model of a serger, I will just specify now because, like I said, there are so many different serger models out there. And unlike um, sewing machines, they've got like a little bit more difference. They all do the same thing, but the way that the parts are arranged is a little tricky. Legitimately, what I do if I need to rethread a serger from scratch or if I'm having technical difficulties is I will Google the <laughs> brand name and the model number. Um, and I can pull up either a YouTube video of someone showing me how to thread it or I can find the manual, which will also tell me what's needed. Um, modern sergers have a lot of really nice like arrows and diagrams of like, oh, step five is the threads and you go like that. Um, but if you're working on an older one, I would just give it a go looking it up and see what you can find. And that is all on using a serger.